Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport has numerous plans to transform the sector this fiscal year. In today's Jamaica Magazine, we dissect some of those plans by shedding light on the Minister's recent sectoral presentation in Parliament. Immediately afterwards, we will share details about the changes to be made to the Domestic Violence Act, followed by the progress of the Kingston Creatives Project. Stay tuned for an informative show. What can a little germs do? Pink I run in belly, even flu. Germs can make them happen to you. Put germs on a man as with these. Cover your mouth when you cough and sneeze. Always wash your hand with water and soap. Keep dirty hands from your eyes and your nose and your mouth. You don't want to be sick, take care. Practice every day, no germs down here. A message from the Ministry of Health. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, June 18, 2021. Jamaica is poised to benefit from the U.S. government's donation of an initial 25 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines globally. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, says that after discussion between both governments, assurances were given that Jamaica would be among the regional nations to receive the vaccines. Jamaica will be part of uh Latin America and Caribbean uh, region where it is anticipated that uh, by the end of this month uh, some distribution will have started. The distribution is a response to the challenges some countries are facing and is part of a pledge by leaders of the Group of Seven G7 countries to donate 1 billion COVID-19 vaccine doses globally to countries in need. Senator Johnson Smith says Jamaica has also participated in discussions facilitated through CARICOM in relation to securing supplies from the initial 25 million vaccine doses. We have not yet had a confirmed quantity, uh, but we uh, continue to liaise as they work out uh, the different uh, formula that they use uh, on guidance from CARFA and other, uh, which of course has links with our uh, local health infrastructure taking into consideration not only our populations, but percentage populations and, of course, the, the rate of transmission which is taking place in various uh, islands. The Foreign Affairs Minister was speaking during Wednesday's Digital Town Hall meeting, which formed part of a two-day virtual Jamaica Diaspora Sustainability Symposium. The Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, says that with less than 1 in 10 persons across Latin America and the Caribbean being fully vaccinated against COVID-19 to date, the G7 country's pledge of 1 billion doses of vaccine cannot come soon enough. PAHO's director, Dr. Carissa Etienne, says this gesture has sparked renewed confidence and hope at the prospect of overcoming the supply challenges being experienced by many territories. She was speaking at the organization's virtual weekly press briefing on COVID-19 held Wednesday. Last week, there were over 1.1 million new COVID-19 cases and 31,000 new deaths reported in the Americas. And for the last few weeks, four of the five countries with the highest weekly death counts in the world continue to be here in our own region. Against this background, Dr. Etienne says she hopes the G7 nations will prioritize vaccines for territories deemed at greatest risk, especially those in Latin America that have not yet had access to enough vaccines to protect the most vulnerable. In other news, the Seaforth Health Center in St. Thomas has been adopted by the Separate Foundation and Canco Limited. This is the latest development under the Ministry of Health and Wellness's Adopt-A-Clinic program. Portfolio Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton has welcomed both entities for their combined commitment to invest $6 million in the facility over three years. The Adopter Clinic program is not intended to build massive structures. Now, if you can afford it, fine, we'll take it. But it really is intended on addressing those smaller issues that are vitally important in the delivery of service and delivering service in a convenient environment in a way that demonstrates compassion, caring and understanding both for those who are providing it as well as those who are receiving it. The Seaforth Health Center has an average weekly patient load of approximately 1,000 and serves a population of about 30,000 residents. 
A redevelopment plan has been prepared for the health center in response to the exponential growth of the community. The pediatric unit at 13 rural hospitals will be benefiting from a donation of pediatric blood pressure equipment, courtesy of the Rotary Club of St. Andrew North and the Kidney Kids Foundation. The mobile blood pressure measuring machines and cuffs valued at $40,000 were handed over to the Ministry of Health and Wellness this past week. Today's handover ceremony marks a step in the right direction as the ministry through their, this, this generous gift seeks to improve and advance the quality of health care across Jamaica, especially to our child and adolescent population. The State Minister of Health and Wellness says these machines will play a key role in the assessment and treatment of the estimated 33,000 persons between the ages of 10 and 18 in Jamaica who are hypertensive. And finally, government will be erecting a life-size bust in tribute to Violet Moss Brown, who once held the Guinness World Record as the oldest living person. Gender Minister Olivia Grange announced the plan to honor the woman who was affectionately called Aunt V during her recent sectoral presentation in Parliament. She was the record holder for the world's oldest living person and oldest living woman until her passing in 2017 at the age of 117 years and 189 days. And so we have the market on display in the foyer here, and you're free to take a good look at it. Minister Grange says the monument of Violet Moss Brown is set to become the first in a series to mark Jamaica's Diamond Jubilee. The ministry will be working with the Trelawney Municipal Corporation on the tribute. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. As mentioned earlier, first up in our program is a review of the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports plans for this fiscal year. Watch this. This pandemic has shown us in so many ways why we must change things that we normally do and or accept in culture, gender, entertainment and sport. We have to re-evaluate what we consider to be a value. We have to devise a better deal for our creative and athletic people. We have to strengthen our mechanism to support and facilitate the people in our sectors. In short, Madam Speaker, we have to be better and stronger. Since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, more than 40,000 creative and sports-related jobs have been negatively affected. But important steps are being taken towards a safe resumption of normal operations in culture, gender affairs, entertainment, and sport. The reopening will look and feel different. The ministry is consulting with numerous stakeholders to determine the specific protocols and venues to be used for entertainment purposes in the short to medium term. The Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport has proposed a list of venues that can be retrofitted to comply with the proposed protocols. We will also be moving to declaring additional entertainment zones and venues. Additionally, as with the sports sector, the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport is offering to subsidize the use of these facilities as a stimulus for the entertainment sector, which we know has suffered because of the pandemic. An additional $10 million in grant funding has been secured by government for members of the entertainment sector hit hard by the pandemic. And Madam Speaker, I'm pleased to announce that the promised 40 million that were not access has now grown to 50 million. The ministry has also invested $14 million in Jamaican creatives via direct sponsorship. Direct financial support in excess of $40 million is also being given to our athletes preparing for the Tokyo Olympic Games. We continue to pursue the redevelopment of the National Stadium and the Trelawney Stadium. 
the ministry is in the process of procuring a new pump for the pool at the National Aquatic Center. It should arrive and be installed by the end of the month. In the meantime, we hire divers to clean the pool so that our aquatic athletes are still able to use the facility. The running track inside the National Stadium was recently resurfaced at a cost of $60 million. Many people ask, what is happening to the Trelawney Stadium? Our development proposal, which is currently going through the public investment management system, will see both facilities being transformed over a period of five years into modern stadia with state-of-the-art facilities that will be able to sustain their operations. In fact, Madam Speaker, the Trelawney Stadium will be at the center of sports tourism and entertainment. As part of government's ongoing project, Jamaica Creative Paint Up Your Creative Space, murals will soon be created on a silo located at the Rockford Complex in East Kingston. It's being done jointly by Mexico's renowned muralist, along with Jamaica's internationally known muralist. So it will be a work of art that depicts Mexico and Jamaica and the bond which we have shared over the years. In partnership with the Urban Development Corporation, UDC, the ministry will also be developing public art for the newly opened Harmony Beach Park in Montego Bay, St. James. In this regard, we will be relocating Fitzharrock's piece, Spirit of Togetherness, which the most honorable Edward Siaga had commissioned to celebrate Jamaica 21. This is the huge art piece that is now housed in the middle of the roundabout by the Sangster International Airport. It will be relocated from there, it will be restored, and it will be placed at the entrance of Harmony Beach Park. And there's more. This year, Madam Speaker, we will erect a life-size bust in Duana Vale, Trelawney, in tribute to Violet Moss Solomon, affectionately called on V. She was the record holder for the world's oldest living person and oldest living woman until her passing in 2017 at the age of 117 years and 189 days. And so we have the market on display in the foyer here and you're free to take a good look at it. Through the Women's Center of Jamaica Foundation, more teenage mothers will soon be equipped with better learning tools and facilities. Madam Speaker, the center is now looking to furnish the property to facilitate school with the young mothers and their babies. Additionally, the center is looking to equip each of the 300 girls on its register with tablets to facilitate their learning. As part of its domestic abuse interventions, 10 vulnerable women will be provided with grants to start or build their businesses and achieve independence. I thank you and women and the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce for their partnership in this important intervention. The minister also tabled the report of the Joint Select Committee established to consider the sexual harassment bill. Here is the report, Madam Speaker. The report contains our recommendations following extensive consultations. When this bill becomes law, it will deal a blow to sexual harassment by bringing relief to victims, punishment to perpetrators, while acting as a deterrent to others. The ministry is also pushing for changes to the domestic violence legislation to introduce sanctions for psychological and emotional abuse as well. Our priorities for the year are to strengthen mechanisms to protect and help vulnerable women and men across our sectors, to facilitate a safe reopening of the wider entertainment sector, and to improve the enabling environment of our sectors to sustainably build back stronger. Our mantra this year is better and stronger.
Living in Jamaica is an experience that you cannot put in words. There's an energy in the atmosphere that just feels good. There are so many aspects of Jamaica that, that I think makes it second to none. The best food, the best music, the best people. We can go on and on about the good things about living in Jamaica. There's a parish in Jamaica called Portland. I think that's one of my favorite places to be. It's, it's one of the most um, nature-oriented parishes. And I love the, the nightlife in Kingston. Once you come here and you get that connection with the people, that connection with the food and the music and just the lifestyle is, is something that you'll always remember. People should visit Jamaica because I'm sure 100% that it is the place to be on planet Earth. You need to come here and you'll get an experience that you will never forget. I'm sure my neighbors hear the screams and cries. I'm sure by now they've seen the bruises through my oversized glasses. Can they tell I'm depressed when we speak? Are they counting my frequent days off from work? Domestic violence is any pattern of behavior used by an individual to maintain control or power over another. Domestic violence is not just physical, it can also be verbal. If you're in a relationship where you are being abused or know of anyone, get out and speak up. Report domestic violence by calling 119 or the nearest police station. Get out before someone puts you out. Gender Minister Olivia Grange says amendments to the Domestic Violence Act will be brought to the House of Representatives before the end of June. If you're not quite sure about what these amendments will be, here's a roundup. There are countless victims of domestic violence across Jamaica. Some sadly will not make it out alive. Domestic violence or intimate partner violence has maimed and claimed too many lives. Neither men, nor women are spared. But government is taking steps to cripple its immobilizing and far-reaching grip on our society. Cabinet has given its approval for the amendments to the Domestic Violence Act, which will serve to strengthen the law. According to the United Nations, domestic violence is a pattern of behavior in any relationship that is used to gain or maintain power and control over an intimate partner. It is any physical, sexual, emotional, economic, or psychological action or threat of actions that influence another person. One of the amendments to be made to the Domestic Violence Act is the inclusion of a comprehensive definition of the term. The definition will make clear that domestic violence is not only physical, but also psychological, emotional, and sexual, and may occur in situations where intimate images are exposed to inflict harm on a person among other situations. Another legislative change will be the expansion of the category of people who will be allowed to apply for protection orders on behalf of an abused person. Government will also expand the conduct or behaviors that the court may prohibit the respondent from engaging in under a protection order. This will include a prohibition on taking possession of or damaging a property that the victim may have an interest in, as well as directing the perpetrator to pay compensation for monetary loss incurred by the victim as a direct result of conduct that amounted to domestic violence. And also, directing the perpetrator to relinquish firearm license, firearm or other weapon to the police and other orders that the court may deem appropriate. Another modification will be the widening of the threshold to be met in obtaining protection orders from the court. This is to give greater protection to those who need the orders to keep abusers away. 
and additionally, government will be increasing the penalty for breach of a protection order. The current penalty is $10,000. We want to see the penalty move to $1 million or imprisonment for at least one year. Though these amendments will go a far way in strengthening the law, perpetrators cannot and will not be punished unless persons speak up and speak out against domestic abuse. If you or someone you know is in a violent relationship, reach out to the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport for help immediately. They can call 876-553-0372. We will get to you and we will ensure that you get to a safe place. We have the call lines for the men and we have lines for the women. Feel free to call us. We are here to help you. That is a commitment of this government. Domestic violence and abuse has always been going on. Say to victims, report the matter, seek help, go to your local police. There are persons who are trained in the various divisions to deal with domestic violence and domestic abuse. We have two centers that are currently operational. One is at the Matilda's Corner Police Station. You can call the Matilda's Corner Police Station for that. The other one is at Air 5 headquarters. That's on the same compound as Constant Spring Police Station. The number is 702. 5120 or 7025121. Co workers, neighbors, family members, don't sit silently and say, Oh, I knew they were having difficulties, but I didn't know the extent. No. Seek help on their behalf and tell the, your victim or your friend who is the victim, say to them, Listen, I want to help you and I'm going to help you, but I have to seek help outside of me. Kingston Creatives project that is being spearheaded by the Culture Ministry intends to position Kingston as the creative capital of the Caribbean. Here's a look at the progress of the program and plans in the pipeline to make it even better. After getting your fresh produce at the Coronation Market, make your way through the busy and bustling streets of downtown Kingston to the edge of the seventh largest natural harbor in the world. What you'll find is an art haven of bright, beautiful, breathtaking murals. Welcome to the Arts Page. You're in for a visual treat. Art has the power to revive and through this, the once abandoned looking buildings in downtown Kingston now don freshly painted murals, transforming the area into an artistic hub abuzz with admirers. My mural depicts a representation of children in the inner city or from the inner city, from inner city communities that face challenging circumstances such as um, poverty, single parenting, and this shorten ability to uh, make positive decisions or choices. With that, the mural also depicts the, it depicts through the use of uh, bright colors and the use of playful organic shapes and lines. It depicts this sense of hope and um, possibilities for change. Uh, my mural is the big green mural uh, with the women and the mushrooms. It's really about sexual coercion and sexual harassment and how these uh, incidences, incidents can have long-lasting effects on women as they go through their lives. Uh, I kind of show that I, the idea with the mushrooms and how the mushrooms growing from them are like a parasite and how these issues uh, can affect them. Ubuntu, I am because we are. 
So this is what I chose to depict for my new mural for Water Lane. And it really just shows the contrast and complement of Jamaica and Africa. So this mural, I wanted to show the difference just between, I guess, our mindset of how we see ourselves and who we were really called to be. So it shows your man and woman, which is your king and your queen. And then also a woman with the baby at her breast, epitomizing just the strength of a woman. And with the basket on her head, um, a bucket or a basket of water. So water is life, woman being the life giver. But it shows even more, you know, the great blue mountains, quote unquote, that's Jamaica, you know, the highest peak. It goes further up the giraffe, which most people know by now is my spirit animal, but it's also a gentle giant. <laughs> What we're trying to do is to remove that stigma and help us to see the beauty of downtown. Downtown Kingston is very, very special. It has a lot of assets through its heritage, its history. Transforming and rebranding downtown Kingston is the mission of Kingston Creative, a nonprofit arts organization. We're founded in about 2017 and we're really centered about around creative people. So our theory is that if you can empower the amount of creative people we have in Jamaica and enable them to succeed, they will then in turn employ people from their families, their communities, and together we'll get, you know, growth in our creative economy. We'll have a healthy creative ecosystem. You can take a stroll down Water Lane to fully experience, grasp, and get lost in the stories on the wall. So we've partnered with the KSAC and with the Tourism Enhancement Fund and the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. And we're developing this walkway that goes east-west. It connects our National Gallery on Orange Street and then you walk along Water Lane and it connects you back with our museums that are on East Street. So it's a natural progression. We used to just walk up and down this lane as we're going on our art walk. And then we started talking to the owners and creating these murals. And now we have about 65 new murals in downtown that we've created since 2018. Artists and other creatives can also benefit from a creative hub and other initiatives. This includes the recently concluded Catapult program, an emergency grant for creatives. It allowed creatives to go on an artist's residency for two months and they were paid 3,000 US. It allowed them to put their work online and they're paid 500 US. It really was a process of giving creatives grants so they could continue creating during the pandemic. We reached over 1,210 creatives in 26 different countries across the region with this partnership with the American Friends of Jamaica. It was our biggest grant to date. We've just signed a $1.295 million US partnership with the IDB. This is a three-year partnership to explore what happens at the intersection of creativity and technology. Kingston Creatives is also a new member of the Global Cultural Districts Network and is listed among others such as Paris, London and Dubai. Thanks to the efforts and partnership of Kingston Creative, Downtown Kingston is well on its way to become a vibrant art district and a space for people to really enjoy a rich culture. This is the final stop in today's magazine. Thanks for staying with us for an informative show. To watch today's program again, just head over to our website, jis.gov.jm or our YouTube page. And while you're at it, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for your daily dose of useful information. Until next time, I'm Audrey Williams, imploring you to have a safe and productive weekend. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Jamaica.